three, four, five. Test, test, test. There. Are. Oh. Okay, there I am. Oh, Jules is here. Sweet. Okay. Um, let's do this. Do this. There. Oh, camera got knocked. Okay. All right. Sweet. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, damn. 710. Okay, so 710 is my absolute start time. Um, when I used to teach locally, I would, you know, on workshops, I would always give 10 minutes. Um, but I'm really trying to get better at that, and I really thought I was going to start on time. But <laughs> in preparation for this class, I just dumped. Sweet. Good. Thank you, Joan. Um, I just dumped uh, water all over the back of my kitchen just now. <laughs> so, I had a little cleanup to do on L9. Uh, let's see. I'll read it. Uh, is that good? I don't know if that's good, man. All right. Let's go more like that. Yeah. It was water, though. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't coffee. Thank God. I, I, I just. Yeah, I, I, yeah, J Jennifer, you are so observant. Yeah, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Louisa, that's how my parents feel. They always inv well when they were here. <laughs> it is clean. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I was thinking about like staying up late. I. I am such a weirdo, y'all. Like, I... Uh, there we go. Okay. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I try, I'm trying something new here. I'm going to see what I can do. That My whole goal was I was going to stay up late, and I was about to drink some coffee, and then I spilt all the water everywhere. Um, oh, thanks. Cool. Okay, so... Um, welcome, everybody. I don't want to... Since I'm getting kind of a late jump here, I don't want to drag on. Sometimes I notice that it's 7.20 before we get started, and that's kind of not cool. So uh, I'll just move through this as fast as I can. Um, or not as fast as I can, but just in the appropriate amount. Is my uh, mic as loud as normal? I can't really tell. It doesn't seem like it is. Maybe I need to t uh, bring it up a little bit. Is that? Is that? Okay. I don't know. Something seems weird. Um, okay. So, uh, it has been really... Okay, it's normal. Okay, cool. Wow. Okay, cool. Okay. So, maybe I didn't need to do the crazy shit I just did. But... All right. There we go. Okay. Um it helps me. I've talked to you guys openly and honestly about how dominated by my should voice I am. And so one of the, like, sort of, I went through a Ram Dass phase. I still have mad respect for Ram Dass, but when he talked about the emotions uh, being waves, you know, that good and bad, that there are waves of water that, like, flow over us. Um, that was very, very insightful for me and helped me because um, I am a very emotional person, although I didn't realize that, but I thought that I wasn't an emotional person because I could control my emotions. And so like this idea of allowing myself to feel without hurting others, right? But to allow myself to feel an emotion. And so the blahs, even though it feels like a lack of emotion, it probably is just, you know, these ripples of feelings that are just rolling over me. But sometimes I just feel blah. And it's not like I'm anti anything. I don't like dislike the world. I just feel blah, you know? And it, it, it just, everything is like unexciting. And it's just hard to get motivated to do anything. And everything you do do is like that picture, like where you're just like trudging through <laughs> like crap to like, you know, and it's so it's, uh, you know, and I don't even know if it's, it's depression, like, I, cause I do suffer from that. So sometimes I wonder if is this, like, is it coming? Like, are these the, like the sort of early winds of the storm you, you feel about depression? But I don't really think it's that. I, I, I think it just sometimes it's just life isn't that exciting. So, um, 
Oh wow, you guys are writing great comments. I mean, as you always do. Okay, let me make sure. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any of this. Um, so anyway, um, but I still want to move. In fact, I, one of the like big gifts of hooping has been moving through, uh, or moving. It, 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 well, actually, never mind. I don't want to edit that. Like it is kind of like moving through these emotions. So what I want to do tonight is just have a good old fashioned. Huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, okay, so I, I feel like, so, you know, I just want to say that, like, I actually, I, maybe I don't need to say, I, I, I think you guys are getting what I'm putting down. If you're watching this on replay, I am not saying that there is anything wrong with this feeling that we need to correct it. Like, the whole point of this class is just sort of saying, like, okay, I'm going to be blah. <laughs> but I still want to hoop. I still want to take care of me. Like, I don't want to become, like, you know, that, that I mean, you know, it's it sucks for me um, to learn this lesson, but there's just things you have to do that you're not excited about, <laughs> which is still hard for me to learn. And sometimes, like, my self-care, my hooping, my flow, or whatever is that thing. So, you know, I'm, that's, I guess that's a, just of the spirit of this class is that we're going to have fun. We're going to hoop. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, all right, let's, let's do this. Okay. You'll at least understand what I'm saying. Um, so tonight will be kind of a 50, 50 class. You can make requests. I have got my dry erase board out. Although, uh, my plan is to kind of like bounce around and be uh multi-topic. So, um, do things that, um, you know, just like the thing about blah days is that I'm not creatively inspired on a blah day. So I want to do things like that, that like won't be techy, but will be repetitive, like, you know, a whole exercise of one technique or something. So that's sort of where I'm thinking we're going, but I'm open to taking your request. And you've probably figured out by now, but it's just me in the flow kitchen. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, all right, we're gonna start with this. It's not, this is not gonna be like the slowest sway in the world. But I haven't heard this song in forever. This reminds me of like Hoop Path 10 years ago. Oh. And I've got some SoundCloud planned and I've got this planned, so we'll see. Yeah, here we go. I love this track, I forgot about this track. Audible breath in. Oh. I'm going to make one quick change here. As I mentioned in the opening, I really appreciated the full story is that Ram Dass is traveling to meet a very holy person and he meets someone along the way who becomes his kind of big brother guide called Bhagwan Das. And the journey to the Guru is long and it's very difficult. And Richard Alpert, which became Ram Das, is feeling weary. And Bhagwan Das basically explains to him that way he saw it, the emotions were like waves of water that rolled over us. That we were the ocean floor, but the water above us was, a, was our experience. And it was
was very real, but it was also passing. Audible breath in. or the sorrow that we feel is very real but it's not permanent and I needed to hear that I still need to be reminded of it audible breath in Feeling preachy tonight, y'all. Let me read your comments, make sure I'm not missing. Nice. Nice. Shelly? Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Jules. I'm reading your, your comments. I shrunk the, the chat down a little bit. Um, I made it a little skinny, so I don't know if that's a problem. But I can fix that if it is. I don't think you guys read the chat on the the stream anyway. But I mean, I think you read it in the comments. Okay. Actually, this is an old school playlist that I think I'm just going to stay with because I really dig it. Okay. So. One of the things that, like, hooping, and the, blah is not related to depression, I hope. <laughs> like, I hope I'm not about to enter into some downturn. <laughs> I think I'm just having a blah day. But even if it's a blah day or depression, like, like I'm a big believer that you should listen to your sadness and then accept but ignore your depression. <laughs> and like, here's what I mean by that. It's like your emotions give you advice, you know, like in, implicit in the emotion. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but sometimes like the emotion comes with some sort of advice and the depression advice is the worst for me. It's like, hey, you should just totally isolate. You shouldn't reach out. You should stop working out. You should stop hooping. You should stop all the things that you enjoy. That's like the, the advice depression is giving me. Whereas sadness is usually more like, if I just listen to why I'm sad, then it's like, it, it tells me, and then we like hug it out and we move on. <laughs> and sadness is gone. And the depression just seems like if I listen to it, it, it just hangs around. And so, but blahness is not depression. I just want to make sure that that's, uh, you understand what I'm not saying. But the reason I go through that whole thing the reason that I go through that whole uh, process or that the reason I went through that whole speech with you just now is that sometimes finding the simplest technique will get me moving through the blahs.
sweet, Jennifer. Yeah. Okay. Look, and I, and I, I, I think y'all know this about me. I'm totally cool with when I I'm obviously sharing my philosophy, and so I'm cool with you disagreeing with it. But I'm glad that you know. Yeah. Okay. Yo, okay. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could. Like I wish I could hug you because I feel accepted right now. <laughs> but you can. You know, maybe I'm wrong. You know, my experience is my own. So I've talked recently about linking the classes together and for me I like to start with the simple technique sometimes when I'm feeling the blahs when I'm not really feeling like super creative and for me right now contact smearing is, is sort of the technique I'm digging. Because I'm in this sort of headspace of nothing is exciting, I'm just keeping my focus on not being excited, but just being with the point of contact and feeling this kind of gooey smear. It's, it's just fun to stay here in this smeary contact, but if you're having trouble staying with one thing, then go to those different things. I really feel like the most beneficial therapeutics of hooping are you in flow state. Actually, it's sweet. We have 40 seconds. <laughs> but this is the most unfeeling thing. But we've done this before. But if you have not done a smear really fast, as fast as you can, and hold it, you haven't realized like how much of a workout it can be. And it's awesome. It is really, really fun. And it turns into this awesome workout <laughs> where... <laughs> I know this is like totally against the vibe I was establishing, but... 
I just feel like the, the the little boy in me just wants to share this. Like it is so fun and it is such a workout and it like works triceps and your like upper arms. It's super fun. Let's see. Okay, sweet. Uh, with this new four, I kind of like the new chat. It's not quite as in the room, but I don't know. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's a workout. Okay, um, how y'all feeling? I think we should. I, I want to jump onto the core. I think um, I'm gonna skip that next song, um, and we'll give the we'll give the arms a break. Kind, I uh, will give the arms a break. Kind of, um, but no, I, I actually, yeah, I know exactly what I want to do here. Let's just keep going. So grab a hoop you like to waist hoop with. That's not the song. This is the song. Okay. All right. Well, everybody's... All right. We have arm burnout, so this is the perfect time to go to the core. Oh, wow. Nice. I love that your arm... <laughs> you guys are fun. I love that your arms are tired from moving them. Okay, so if your arms are tired, maybe you can just lean them into each other in some sort of prayerful thing while we core hoop or whatever. If you haven't been packing wine or doing two hours of ecstatic dance, you can bring the hands up. Two bird, two tree, and hoop path is when you are moving both hands. They don't have to move the same way, but you're moving both of them. You're or at least you're aware of them. You're like you're holding them or you're moving them, but you're not just oh, unaware of them. That's two birds. Two trees is when you move both sides of the body. You have a left tree and a right tree. And two bird, two tree, hooping is when, for a whole song, you move your hands, or at least you're aware of the movement of your hands, and then you're aware of the movement of your trees, your two legs. Which is really, it's more than your legs, it's the whole right side of your body. It's the whole left side of your body. So, like, my tree stops right at my wrist. And I can turn those trees in on each other like an internal rotation or out. I can rest on one tree. steps of hooping. Wow, that's insane. <laughs> How long is that? How long did it take you to get that? I'm keeping it on the waist because it feels good. I'm going to reverse. I'm keeping it on the waist, but I totally expect that most of you have already moved on to somewhere, but I'm digging it. For me, hooping on the waist is not boring at all. It might be boring for people watching me, but for me, it's not boring at all. I feel like I can connect with the rhythm more deeply, like in my core. My feet kind of learn how they can move.
and I'm most likely to forget that I'm hooping when I'm on the floor, or when I'm on the waist. Wow. <laughs> wow, you're an ad for hooping right now, Shelly. <laughs> One of the things that used to hold hooping back as a fitness regimen, even though I thought it totally should be, um, was people would look at the efficiency of things because, you know, we're all tight on time. We all don't have that much time. And so people would look like, okay, well, you know, what, what, what can I get the most out of in the least amount of time? And unfortunately you can, but a lot of times you don't enjoy it. You know, <laughs> like you might enjoy the results like two weeks later when you finally notice them, but you don't really enjoy it. Or you might enjoy the lack of guilt that you didn't do anything. <laughs> but like the appeal of hooping is that you enjoy it, you know, so you're much more likely to come back to it because you dig it, at least at some level you do, you know. <sighs> yeah, well, <laughs> the goop path. <laughs> okay, I am like totally in preach mode tonight, and I'm sorry about that, y'all. Let's, ooh, let's try legs. Let's try legs. I think this will be fun. And if you can't do legs, do something else. Do shoulders or whatever. But let's try legs. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, I shouldn't be wearing what I'm wearing right now for legs, but... I wish I had known we were working legs, but, but this is the perfect reason why. If you can't do legs at all, my advice is to try and bring both legs together and break them together to sort of put a little break in the knees and feel this first. This is called one tree leg hooping. If you want to learn how to bring the hoop up from here, you externally rotate out the legs and start to scissor them or push the knees towards other corners. Come back down here. I'm gonna externally rotate both legs and start to point, bring them up towards the corners of the room. If you can get this far where you feel like you're in control of the hoop, then you add the birds. Unless you're too tired from your 14,000 steps, <laughs> you're packing wine and everything else, ecstatic dances. But this is my best advice for learning to leg hoop is actually like once you can establish anything, move the hands.
one thing that can change your leg hooping is how you position the body. Like I can lean, a lot of people don't realize it, that they're leaning over the current. They do the same thing in shoulder hooping. Sometimes you lean over the current. It can help sometimes in legs to think about leaning back. I mean, we all have different issues. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oops. And then we can reverse. I have to share with you guys before that my second current on legs is my best current. I worked on it a long time, but I also think it somehow the way that I naturally move my dominant leg helps. But my second current became, is definitely my most comfortable. I feel pretty good in the other one. I feel pretty good in this one. not sure how to move your hands, you can just like punch, hit, drums, whatever you want. <laughs> Birds are flying, sweet. you guys feeling? That was four minutes of legs. So if you were able to do it most of that time, you should feel good about that. Um, I uh, also, th I just want to keep reminding you because I wanted to make I want to make sure you understand that there is a little bit of vulnerability on your part, but I I encourage you to share your progress in the comments here. I really do. Like, whether it, for people on replay, because there are people that, I, you know, y'all might not realize it, they watch it live, but there are people on replay that consider themselves a part of this, and sometimes they'll post comments about their progress during a particular bit on replay. So I just really, you know, just want to encourage you to to make this your community feel like we can share some stuff because like if we were in a real physical room we would all know that you just went off on shoulder hooping <laughs> like that's what used to be so awesome about taking live classes is that people would be like holy shit what did you just do like we just all witnessed you like i witnessed so many breakthroughs not just like on the road but just at home like these deep breakthroughs or just like where you realize like somebody just uh, like leveled up and you know like y'all don't get that benefit of being in a room with all of us but wow 40 pounds yeah i love fat rhythms uh, let's see what do you... <laughs> okay all right so let's um how are y'all feeling i'm not sure this is when i could use some help knowing whether you're Yeah, yeah. You know, the, um, yeah, I, I am so preachy tonight, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was about to go on this thing. All right. But I will just say, all right, let me just say this. Whenever a student says, Lauren, that they are a newbie, it's almost always <laughs> coming from a great student. Like, you know, it, it, it's almost like, the more problem student is the one that immediately jumps to moderate at something <laughs> because it's not just that they, maybe they are, but that their mindset is that they just need to learn the extra stuff and they don't need to learn the basic stuff. And like that newbie mindset, that what they call in martial arts, the beginner's mind and, uh, in an art, well, in art, they do that. Uh, so valuable. I mean, a lot of seasoned movers wish they could be back in the beginner's mind where, Sweet. Okay. I love the support y'all are giving each other. Okay. All right. So, 
I am going to try shoulder hooping to this song and I invite you to try it. Um, this will be the last of our sort of high energy songs and then we'll, we didn't start too, too late. I think I made up for it with a short talk. So yeah, oh, uh -huh. right on Louisa. Yep. Oh. Uh -huh. I really appreciate all these comments, y'all. They're so smart. I, I... Good. Okay. All right. I almost feel like we were just having. I wish. I almost wish we were having like a Zoom coffee together right now. Let me try to teach class, but uh, let's do some shoulder hooping. All right. One of the th reasons that I am playing this song right now for shoulder hooping is that I used to use this song to help people create more rhythm on their shoulder hooping. And here's what I mean by that. Like, if you can shoulder hoop at all, <laughs> nice. If you can shoulder hoop at all, then you can start, and, and by that I mean like for 30 or 40 seconds, you can start to add like hand movements. Like this is me like, like sort of releasing first. Maybe I'll get close and see if you can. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Numbers. And these little movements, they might seem silly or unnecessary, but they can really, like, this is me if I'm trying to, like, paddle water, but they can really, like, help you develop, like, this just, which is what feels like just sort of a superpower of coordination. Like, and they can really change your shoulder hooping and make it a lot more comfortable. So uh, let me make a, a quick pitch. Um, 
I think hooping in front of a mirror all the time can actually be distracting and you can wind up and I've done it. I've done it. Like, so this isn't like nobody's doing anything bad. It can help you refine moves, but when you're out in the wild and there is no mirror, it can be kind of, it, 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 it can feel like the cane that's not there. Um, so like not everybody's that way, but just be careful with that. <laughs> but what I have found is that filming yourself is awesome feedback because even though you're going to be flowing, you're still aware of the camera, you're not like, it's hard. You can always tell kind of like when a hooper's hooping in front of a mirror, like if they're doing isolations, you know, not, not, not always, but like a lot of times there's the tell is that their eyes are just focused on the same thing all the time, you know, and you can just sort of tell, and it, it looks awesome. I'm not knocking it. There's no rules in hooping, that, the, <laughs> but as a training tool, a mirror can sometimes become this crutch that's not there when you're out in the wild at the festival or doing your thing so uh but filming is awesome and i really think like the first <laughs> you know it depends but like you'll you'll probably hate yourself the first time you see yourself filmed and then you might fall in love with yourself after that and both <laughs> are probably good to keep in you know <laughs> perspective right but definitely a lot of people hate themselves the first time they see them on video and it can discourage their hooping and all of that stuff but what what i think after talking to them what they're really hating is how they look and we all hate how we look right <laughs> so you know like once you get over that and you're like oh it's not really my hoop skill is bugging me it's just the same shit that has been dogging me for my whole life and actually i kind of like that because i can see like you can see your progress in your hoop videos over time it'll totally happen anybody that hoops even once a week gets better and so like you'll see your progress so i totally encourage you to to film um yourself uh it's your friends might think you're vain or whatever but that's really how hoopers learn the problem with the mirror is you stay focused on it the problem with it, the cool thing about cameras you might stay focused on it but you could lose your focus on it and that's when the good shit happens okay i think we'll just move into some free hoop You know, and, 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 you know, this is just loose advice, right? Like, this is just me throwing seeds. You don't have to, it doesn't have to land. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, you don't have to always share. Like, the thing with me is, like, I don't know. People used to say, like, you only video yourself. I, I used to video myself every single hoop practice. Like, every single one, you know, um, because I needed to get used to the camera. Because I, it sounds weird because I do this live stream, but, like, when people are paying attention to me, I get really tight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's just hoop here. All right, we'll just do a free hoop from here. Yeah, I learned that I need to stand up more. <laughs> I mean, there was so much help that videos helped me, you know. If you trust someone, you can have them film you and walk around, and that can be super helpful too. But that, you know, maybe you don't. You know. Okay, so we're just going to free hoop from here. Thank you guys for joining. That's cool. <laughs> I'm always the out talker, so if y'all are out talking me, then I think that's okay. <laughs>
Okay, let's do one more, I think. Maybe this isn't the one I want to do. Uh, let's try this one. Yeah, I'm glad you guys feel that. I, I feel that totally, too. And, you know, in my local classes, we used to have moments where the opening circle would last like a half hour. <laughs> But it wasn't because anybody was impatient. It was just like, or, you know, like we would, you know, it just, sometimes we would just start talking in the middle of class, you know, and, um, yeah. That, that human connection that y'all feel to each other and to me and everything is such a big part of what I was used to. So it's, it's awesome to see it in the comments. It, it really, thank you. Jennifer, I feel you on the shyness. Thank you so much. Yeah. Nice. I'm sorry, I'm reading the comments. I'm not. <laughs> Have a great night, y'all. I'm going to go to Green. I appreciate it. I will see you Saturday. I'm not sure if I'll be with anybody. It might just be me, but we'll see you Saturday. Thank you.